Hey everyone, welcome to Los Olivos, California, to Fred's Car Barn, where we've just completed, I think, the coolest project we've ever done. So come on inside, I'm gonna take you through a long, detailed tour of all the things we've done to this amazing place. This is it. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. So it's always exhausting to do a project like this and I always set a timeline that's unrealistic. Uh, we had to extend one day but we did get it done. Uh, I want to take you through each detail. I'm sure I'll miss some things. Uh, I'm guessing you're looking at the timeline here. It's probably an hour plus long video. Uh, but I want to take you through all the decisions, uh, all of the timeline of uh, what we did here uh, and show you all the individual parts and pieces of this garage as it comes to me as we walk around. Uh, and so the first thing you'll notice in here is the flooring. Uh, the size of this, just to put it into perspective, I know it looks probably really big on camera, it's 42 feet wide in this main area and 45 feet deep. Uh, and so you're looking at right around 1,900 square feet. I believe the center ceiling here is 22 feet tall. Uh, and so it's a pretty expansive, you know, barn-like look uh, with a really modern take. Uh, and so the first thing we did was do, you know, uh, 2,000 square feet of Swiss Rax flooring. There's actually a floor drain here. So there's floor drains here and there's drains around the, around the building as well. Um, but Swiss Trax is a great candidate for any kind of washing environment. Uh, this isn't the main washing area. I'll show you the wash bay in the back. Uh, but this, this area here, he wanted to be able to rinse off uh, prior to getting on the lift. Uh, wanted to be able to take some of the bigger vehicles and wash them in here when necessary. Uh, but Fred was pretty adamant. He didn't want any hose reels in the main area. He wanted it to be really clean. Uh, but he did want to see the Prevost piping. Uh, and so we actually have a connection and valve uh, that goes back to the main pressure washer system uh, so we can wash here. A couple of things I'll mention about Swiss tracks, which works perfectly in this area. Uh, it's a great washing type tile uh, because it is curved and it's three quarters of an inch thick and it's channeled. Uh, so the floor is sloped toward the drain, both from, from back or front to back and back to front. So we slope to this center drain here. Uh, the Swiss tracks can carry a pretty decent contour of the floor. So notice it's not clicking and clacking on me. Um, but the magic of this is all the dirt and debris and all that stuff sits under the floor. Uh, and then I can very easily go and vacuum it up. Uh, and uh, blow it out if I want to, or you know, wash everything toward the drain. Uh, so I know it's a bit counterintuitive. There's actually some water under here from us spraying some stuff earlier. Uh, what water doesn't run to the drain will evaporate up through the tile, and we end up with a you know really great experience where it's not slip slippery when it's wet. Uh, and uh, again, the key for me is it doesn't click and clack. The dirt, I know this is very counterintuitive, especially for someone like me who's the Mr. Detail oriented. Um, it's magical that the thing always looks freaking clean and I can just sweep it up whenever I want. Uh, so we had to make you know, quite a few cuts around the lifts, around the recessed lifts. Uh, around the, 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 all the cabinets and stuff. But to do a floor like this probably took about 10 hours, you know, worth of, worth of labor to, to do the floor. It is pretty easy. It's very much a DIY project. I mean, I did basically, me and Kyle and uh, a couple others helped us do the flooring. Super, super simple to do. Uh, all you need is a circular saw and a piece of plywood and you can, you know, 
cut, make all the cuts you need to make, and maybe a, uh, a razor blade. So then if we kind of work our way, I guess, from back to front, uh, these are some, lots of people have been saying, how the heck did this happen? Uh, these are Sonic cabinets that uh, Fred had custom powder coated. So no, they don't sell them this uh, in this finish. Um, he had them powder coated to match and powder coated in Lista Green. Uh, and so these uh, you cannot order, but you can always powder coat your own. They come in uh, gray face, black sides. Uh, and then in here is where we have uh, some basic washing stuff uh, for a setup on our valve on the side of the wall here. So Fred likes FTD, FTW tiles and he likes Eagle Edgeless. And so we loaded them up with, he bought a, a couple of cases of each. We loaded them up and then Kyle and I went and went and set up uh, his, his little uh, display here, or his cabinet here for doing basic washing. More sophisticated washing will happen over in the wash bay. Uh, and then he has, uh, he's been using this a lot. I need to start doing this. He puts our, this is Obsessed Garage and my collaboration with Smith & Co, uh, the leather scent from Helen, and he sprays this on his floor mats and his cars smell pretty awesome. It actually lasts a lot longer than the Grio stuff. Just a little tip for you there. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about the audio system as we get to the front, but we do have a Dynaudio Core 7 and it's our rear speakers in here for listening to either five channel or multi-channel stereo or obviously for surround as well. Uh, and so he, um, the, he has these, can't remember the name of the doors. He has sliders, doors all over the property. There's a guest house next door. Uh, that's where we've been staying the last few days. So the whole project, we generally start with lighting. You know, so it's flooring, lighting, then cabinets and tools and all of that stuff. Uh, and so this garage, uh, again, this section of it is 1,890 square feet. Then there's a roughly 240 square foot wash bay. Uh, and then there's an upstairs area and a prep kitchen uh, as well. Uh, and so the whole facility is 2,700 square feet total. Uh, I believe the building is roughly 60 by 40 uh, with, the, you know, with an upstairs. It's a little bit bigger than, I think it's like 42 feet wide, uh, like 61 feet long or something like that. They fit the maximum they could fit on this part of the property. Uh, but lighting was a major focus. Fred likes a lot of light. Uh, this place is also gonna have dual purpose, believe it or not. Um, Fred will be hosting all kinds of events and get togethers. Uh, he's retired. This is a really cool town, uh, Los Olivos here, and uh, I guess it's sort of South Central California. We're about two hours north of LAX. Uh, this, um, this facility, at times, he's going to set up with tables and chairs, and he owns a, a wine tasting company in town here uh, that his son runs and owns and operates. Uh, and so, at times, they'll be hosting little you know parties and events here. So he wanted two different purposes of lighting. The first type of lighting we have in here is recessed, uh, and so the lighting for more sort of ambiance is at 4K. So it's a little bit yellower, not quite as cool. Uh, these are DMF lights. Uh, right now, we're at somewhere around 60 to 70 foot candles of light, uh, especially at night. Uh, and of course, it's dimmable and controlled by Lutron Radio Raw 2 that Kyle and team designed. Uh, but the, the option to do normal lighting, I, I actually think we'll probably start doing this more often where we do dual purpose lighting. Um, one for more just background and then the other flamethrowers, which are the Cree LS. So if I go up to Cree LS, these are at 5,000 Kelvin. Uh, now with all lights on, we're getting around 150 to 155 foot candles of light uh, in the Deep Tail Bay area here. Actually, I think there's one section where it's like 172, 174 foot candles of light. Uh, normal standard would be somewhere around 90 to 110. Um, and so we have the headroom, the ability to be able to light the heck out of this place. We can control it from our phone, uh, so Fred can tell Siri to turn, to turn the lights off. He can also hear if he exits through this door, his house is actually on this side, the guest house is on that side, uh, and so you're able to just kind of walk out and turn the lights, exterior lights on and interior lights off. And then we have all different zones and different scenes and stuff set up uh, in the Lutron app as well. As we work our way down, this is uh, bucket filling. Uh, Fred doesn't do buckets on the ground. He likes buckets on a cart. I'll show you his little cart solution, which he has powder coated in Lista Green as well. Um, and so what we did is we put our normal prior hose bib, this is the P, uh, P166, 
Uh, we put this at normal 48 inches, uh, our, uh, abnormal, but our normal 48 inches of height. Uh, and then we did our, our little bucket filler solution here. This is the T316 stainless hose uh, with um, uh, all MTM quick disconnects on it as well, adapted to work, uh, super pliable. Uh, Fred, because we're doing a bucket on a stand or on a, on a rolling cart, uh, we did 12 inch, uh, but normally we'd do 24 inch, uh, but we do have options to you know, custom make that whatever size you want. And then this is very unique. Uh, I think it turned out really, really cool. So the common question is, Matt, why didn't you put the Prevost in the wall? I mean, we built this from scratch. I wanted to see it, Kyle wanted to see it, Mike wanted to see it, Fred wanted to see it. Uh, this Prevost stuff is awesome to look at. Uh, and the green is, is, a, is enough contrast, it's enough of a green delta or difference uh, over the cabinets that it doesn't clash and it looks really freaking cool. Uh, all these fittings are anodized. Uh, they actually have blue rings. Mike popped all the blue rings off so we stayed black. Uh, and then this is the color that they denote for nitrogen delivery. Obviously we're not delivering nitrogen. Uh, but what Kyle uh, and Fred came up with, Fred doesn't want hose reels in here. He wanted to keep uh, the main area clean uh, and would rather just get out a bare hose and just do like a 25 foot hose and then roll, coil it up and put it back in the cabinet. Uh, and so they came up with this concept of let's run two inch piping as a sleeve. Uh, and so you can see the bend there. Uh, and so this will be fully serviceable in that our hose, if we ever had a, a leak or a problem with it, say five, six, eight, eight, 10, 20 years from now, um, you could just pull the hose through and pull a new hose back through the sleeving. Uh, and then it looks super cool running in parallel with the airline that's next to it. Uh, and then what Mike did is fasten our valve uh, and then put a plug on the end. So all you have to do is take a coupler on the end of a pressure washer hose, plug it in, and you can run and gun. I turn my valve on and I'm good to go. Nice and easy. Piece of cake. So um, I think this might have been largely Fred's idea. I think it's pretty cool. It's an interesting take. Um, you know me, I'd put hose reels everywhere. Uh, but it's, it's really cool that nice and clean that you can pop on there and go. I'll talk about the air compressor as we work our way back, but we also ran one inch lines. One inch lines for a consumer or regular garage is not necessary. I just think the one inch is the happy medium. It's the best looking version of a, of a, uh, of the size line. Uh, and then we have all our Prevost S1 couplers and then we've adopted the European standard. Here's Fred's little cart. I kind of like this, <laughs> you know, it's making me think, shoot, maybe I should uh, do something like this. I've never had a garage this big, uh, and so I haven't had a cart. Uh, I'm working with Rousseau to maybe, you know, come up with some, some solution. But he had it, he had powder coated in the matching list of green and then had all his green bottles. I think it's pretty cool. So I, mean, I think it looks really good. And then we outfit him with all matching towels, nice, nice and set up. So you can see our Prevost lines running. We have four manifolds, so in all four corners to cover the whole garage and uh, that you know, satisfies any need there. The doors, so they're insulated co-plays, uh, and then check out this genius that we've all, everybody I know that's a car guy has always wanted to do this, but he powder coated the tracks. And of course, flat painted the walls of tricorn black, or the ceilings, sorry, the ceilings and the I-beams, tricorn black. Uh, there's actually, don't tell California, but there's actually a window that's going in up there uh, into the office. I guess they wouldn't let them do that because of the fire break or the separation of the kitchen versus the other, even though it's all, all one garage. If they got goofy rules here, so. Uh, but there will be a giant bay window that he opens up here in the not too distant future. So uh, we have uh, the taller door, um, just I guess because you can, 22 foot ceilings here in the center. And you can see our Cree and DMF set up. The lights on the extreme right and left there you're seeing are wall wash. So they're a you know, angled wall wash type of light. And then the ones down the center are your normal, you know, sort of general ambient lighting that operate you know, at, at 90 degrees. So on this side, uh, same thing. We have a matching uh, sonic cabinet. And this is where he'll put like car chargers and jumper cables and things like that, floor mats, things. Um, 
you didn't have a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's OBD to OBD scanner and things like that. Uh, so we have that on this side of the, of, the, of the garage, and you'll notice we put a core sub here in the back as well. So two core subs, one in each corner, uh, which is the dream. So lots of space. He has, I forget how many cars he has, like eight or nine cars, something like that. Um, so lots of, he has lots of parking over there, and then he has a storage facility down the road as well. Uh, but uh, he'll keep you know his cars in here, so this would very easily hold you know nine cars, you know. F three left to right and front to back, if not more, if, if needed. I'm a big proponent of, if you're gonna do single doors, just do them double wide. And so these are 12 foot doors, I believe. All three of them are 12 feet, even though it's you know, technically a single door. So the thing that's screaming at you is, yes, in ground, scissor lifts. This is a jumbo nine. Those are Jumbo 7s from my favorite lift manufacturer, Nussbaum, uh, and they are recessed. Uh, and they are set up, you know, specifically at the exact right height so that they're flush with Swiss tracks. Uh, and I can just drive up and over it. If I don't want to use the lift, I can drive up and onto it if I do. Uh, I'm a big, big proponent of scissor lifts because it gives me full access around the car. So we're calling this a restoration lift. This is our main lift, and this is our detail lift. Uh, and the difference is the detail lift has extra light. So he has two more uh, 16 foot, so two 16 foot arrays of, uh, or, or um, banks of Cree lighting. So we get somewhere around, well, let's see. Let's see what it says here. I'll grab his uh, light meter out. Yeah, 176, 173 foot candles of light. That's pretty sweet. But it's not fatiguing. That's what's so cool about this. It's just like not, um, it's not wearing me out. Since I have this open, you can see all Fred's cars here. But he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, he's got 11 or 12 cars, something like that. Uh, Kyle set this up here where he spent a good half a day getting his battery bank all set up so he can charge different things, Ego, Festool. He's a, um, he didn't do an OG vac, he likes a, a rolling vacuum. Uh, and this is something that um, is, I think important to mention. You know, when we're designing this stuff, uh, you know, we're working with the customer. They're, most of the customers are interested in some of our design cues, but then they have some of their own things that they want to do as well. List of green doing piping on the wall in green, um, you know, choosing some different stuff. They like different products. You know, Fred and I had some knockdown drag outs about different microfiber towels, but I love that. He didn't just make that decision lightly. He's tested, he's tried, you know, and he likes the FTW towels and he likes the Eagle Edgeless towels from the right company. And he realized, well, I don't like these other ones. Uh, and so uh, setting up the garage for the person and how they're going to use it, I think, is the most important thing in, 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 um, in any you know, garage or any setup. So we do lose a few inches when you put the lift in the ground. So we lose four inches of height. From the floor to max height, you get 78 inches. Uh, in this case, we're getting about 74 inches plus whatever the lift block allows. So this one here is the 7,000 pound capacity version. Kyle uh, spent a whole day painting all the, uh, all the wells, you know, a flat black. And then this is the normal Lista gray, or I'm sorry, not Lista, uh, Nussbaum gray finish. We had some difficulty with these uh, for several years and just getting them, you know, with supply chain issues and steel issues. Now they're really readily available. Um, this is actually one of the last of the American-made lifts. We'd ordered these several years ago, uh, but the, uh, the, you know, the parts are German-sourced and American-made. Uh, the 9,000s were all German-made only. Um, and so from here on out, the 7,000-pound lifts are also going to be made in Germany. Uh, so the, the lift controllers will actually change a little bit, and uh, they went to the Bosch submerged um, uh, pumps instead of the instead of the, the hydraulic pumps instead of the ones that these have, uh, and so you can see. You know, I'm six foot two, so if I come on the side here, and remember, the car doesn't sit on the lift. The car sits on a lift block, 
Uh, and so the car is going to be a good two, three inches above my head height. Uh, and so despite, you know, common misconceptions about Swiss tracks flooring and common misconceptions about scissor lifts, if you, if you just haven't experienced them, it's different than what you, many of you are thinking. Um, so if you can just suspend your disbelief here for a few minutes uh, and want get through the video, uh, I'm telling you, if you have a scissor lift in your life, uh, you can do 98% of what you can do on a two post, uh, do it a little bit safer, it's a little easier to get on and off of, and then I have full access to the car. So most of the time when I'm operating my scissor lift, I don't have it at full height, I have it somewhere down at chest level where I can take wheels and tires off, I can detail, I can adjust, I shoot up. half the time I clean my interior, I put it on the lift, it just makes it easier to get to the, the floor mats. Uh, and so I don't have any big beams or poles in the way on the side. And then think about this logically. If I have a Porsche, my engine's back here, or I could back it on, so I could drop an engine out. If I have a normal front engine vehicle, my engine's here, so I can get to the subframe and everything, you know, in the front. Uh, I can get the drive shaft transmission, you know, from my distance left to right, uh, and then, you know, if, if I'm working in a shop, you know, 24 seven, uh, and I'm doing like big jobs, like, you know, engine swaps and transmissions and stuff like that, I'm dropping that stuff out, then a scissor lift's not gonna be my primary lift. You know, I do a two post for sure. Um, but if I'm a normal mechanic in my garage and most of the work I'm gonna be doing is wheels and tires and brakes and, you know, polishing and detailing and stuff like that, a scissor lift is 100% the way to go. I, I cannot stress it to you enough that suspend some of your, you know, you know, some of your pre preconceived notions about flooring and about, about this stuff. And, you know, if you consider it, I, I, think, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The other common misconception is, oh, I jump oil on here. If I'm gonna dump oil on any floor and I know that it's gonna happen, I'm dropping, you know, if I'm, I'm changing a, uh, my coolant or something like that, I know it's gonna go all over the place. I just put some cardboard down. Um, but if I don't do that and I drop some oil, all I do is just pop a tile up and pop it back in place. It takes 30 seconds, you know? It's not that big of a deal. It's not as big of a deal as you're making out to be. I drop a screw, it's, and that's another counterintuitive thing. When I drop a screw on Swiss tracks, it falls and stays where I dropped it. If I drop a screw on a regular concrete floor, it rolls wherever it rolls to. Uh, and so, unless it's the tiniest of screw or washer, and even then, then you can just look under the tile, pop it up, grab it. It's not, it's not, it's really not a big deal. Um, and so this combination of recessed in ground is the dream, but I mean, you don't need to do that. You know, you can put it right on top of the concrete and we have a pro tramps that actually work really well for many years. That's how mine was set up. Uh, but doing this recessed version, if you have the choice, if you have the option to add a floor drain and then do a recessed lift when you're building a garage, why the heck not? And you can work with our design team and help, they can help you make sure that you're, you're doing it correctly and setting up the, uh, the, the position of it correctly, distance from the wall, all that kind of stuff. So as we work our way back, get another manifold, and then we have these cuties. This, this, this guy, green, Lista Green. Um, you know, Lista, we're a dealer for Lista. We can do Lista cabinets for you. Um, I've been a long-term uh, Lista, you know, diehard fan. Uh, and uh, I have Lista in my garage at my house. Um, we're, we're, most of the time our design team's gonna just maybe suggest you do something a little different. You do a Rousseau. Uh, we had, this Fred was one of our first, you know, custom ordered Lista customers. Luckily we had a couple of years to get them. We've just struggled with their ability to order and get the product to us. Uh, and these actually turned out really, really great. Um, the fit and finish on, on the list of green and the care that they took putting these together, these are in much, much better condition than mine. Uh, the cabinet countertops actually turned out pretty decent as well. Um, there's a couple of little janky things we had to overcome, like the, the, um, the countertop had swelled a bit, maybe because of you know, humidity or dampness. Uh, and so Mike actually cocked the edge here so that it you know, matches the stainless, just little, little tweaks we had to make, which is pretty normal. When you're taking industrial grade products, like industrial lifts, you don't just drop it in. You don't have like a customer support line. You gotta figure it out. 
Same thing when you're doing like Prevost piping and custom, you know, high-end hose reels and stuff like that. Custom audio, you know, you've got to be willing to work for it a little bit. I mean, I, and I think part of what Obsessed Garage has become, become is that I'm obsessed with this is all part of my life. Um, I don't want to use the same things that people are using from Home Depot or from AutoZone. I want to find the best stuff and I want that best stuff to be, um, I want us to have access to that. And so Lista is one of those things. The way we set up this garage is our battery charging and then we put our interior polishing coating. We have polishing pads. We set up, and Fred let us do this all by the way, which is like, uh, pretend like I was working hard, but it was like a freaking dream to me to be able to do this. Uh, polishers, our next round, I mean, maybe he'll convince me to come out here is tool grid. So gridding out the drawers, uh, doing some list of drawer separation as well. Uh, that's kind of hard to do until you get everything laid out and just figure out what you got. We got towels in here as well. Uh, this is one of the coolest things is I'm a big proponent of doing a big, this is a 44, 40 gallon, 40 gallon Rubbermaid Brute garbage can. Having a big garbage can in a garage I think is imperative. Uh, and then we have all our coating applicators and stuff here. I like these little gloves. Let me get me a set of these, Mike. They're really comfy. Yeah. For doing this kind of stuff. I think that's cool. So, um, I did print out my master collection. I'm going to leave it on Fred's counter here so he can kind of go through the OG master collection and get cleaned up with some of this 3D stuff and some of the stuff that I don't, uh, I don't condone. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, you know, Fred's adopted a large percentage of, like most customers, most of you adopted a large percentage of the OG process and then has, you know, found some things that are preference of his own and we kind of put that all together. So we have our control, um, um, what you're seeing here is thermostat for future HVAC, so that's, that'll be coming you know, next. This is an area of the world that doesn't really need a lot of air conditioning support, um, but I think he will you know, heat and condition the place, you know, for mainly for the extreme months, the winter and summer. So check this out, you'll, you'll dig this. So this here, we did this at John's Garage in Atlanta. Uh, where we put a lift, the lift controller. So we took the 9,000 pound capacity lift and then it, it's more conducive the way that it's set up. You know, this one we can't fit as easily, um, but the 9,000 pound, we put the lift controller inside of the cabinet. It makes it a little bit quieter and it makes it freaking cool. Um, now you're cutting a you know, thousand dollar cabinet, so you got to make sure you cut it correctly. But all this stuff, the motor's actually inside of here. Um, I got to do a little bit of wire tying up here to finish this up. We still have room for some buckets and my water that I'm using to make sure that I clear my throat. Yeah, here and on to me. I just set that on the side here. So um, that I think is really freaking cool. So then um, these are these are the stainless tops uh, from Lista. Lista stainless tops. We also did. Uh, I'm going to talk Fred into this, um, into getting a full master collection, but we also did our, um, our uh, I think we did the advanced package of the Sonic foam inlay. These drawers are a little bit longer, slightly deeper than Sonic's. Um, so I actually, we're going to, we or, we'll order him. I have this at my house where there's a little separator that holds it specifically in place. It drives me nuts when it slides a little bit to the back. Uh, but we have um, tons and tons of room. We only have one, two, three, four, five, six drawers filled. Uh, and so we have tons of room to get them full master collection. We'll, we'll talk them into that as, uh, as time goes on. But this is the tool or mechanical area. Um, and so we'll keep the main tools in this spot, like putting things like, you know, power cords in the bottom drawer and just trying to keep things nice and, nice and organized. Um, we will tool grid this out, like all our air tools are here, uh, but the long-term plan would be every drawer has a purpose, every drawer looks like a sonic foam inlay, every drawer has stuff gridded and organized. It doesn't look like much, but I mean, Kyle and I spent at least three days, solid 10, 11 hour days, of just putting the stuff in the cabinets. I know on camera it looks like, oh man, 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 it'll take you 15 minutes. 
it's not quite that simple, especially when we're going through all his bins. He's been living out of bins for, for you know, a couple of years now while designing this place, still trying to be a car guy. Uh, and so those are some of the unseen things you don't, you don't get to see. Otherwise, you know, you'd be bored to tears trying to watch us, you know, of every square inch of, of everything in the garage. Um, and so then the second lift is over here. So this is the matching. So again, 7,000 pound lifts on the left and right. Uh, this is the area where a car might sit on the lift a little longer. Uh, so we call this the restoration bay. So detail bay, main bay, restoration bay. So this is where he has a car on the lift. It's a big project and he just leaves it, leaves it on there. Uh, most of his ingress, egress will be through the doors over here to his, to his house. Uh, again, this is the, the guest house here. He plans to do all kinds of different events and stuff like that. Wine tastings, car guy gatherings, all that kind of stuff. He's kind of become the, the unofficial mayor of this town, it seems. So um, he'll, be, um, he'll be having all kinds of people come and, uh, and, and just check out what he, what he put together here. So this is where the Milwaukee Master Collection is gonna be housed. I kind of put this stuff for now. Um, we're gonna come and, you know, in the future, he's gonna convince me to come back out and tool grid this all out. Uh, where we'll do all of our Milwaukee stuff in here. Uh, notice he even took Viper chairs and did a you know, custom powder coating on them. He's one up in me, man. This is, this is a level way above me. I need to get some custom powder coating. So here will become the sort of Milwaukee epicenter uh, when we get him master collection on both my master collection I put together. Um, if you're not familiar, you can just go to obsessedgarage.com, go to Milwaukee, go to master collection, I bought every single Milwaukee tool that exists and I've kind of touched and felt and sorted and resorted and made a collection of the tools that I think you'd want. I think it's 52 tools, 52 batteries. Uh, and then we also have an accessory collection that matches and that's gonna go here. Uh, and so I'm gonna put that together for him and uh, send it out here in the next, next few months. Uh, the thing I didn't talk about was this really cool uh, rolling cart. I suspect you know, this is on wheels. I suspect that this desk is going to be out in the middle here, floating around, moving around wherever it needs to go. So I think this is really cool where um, I'd love to have something like this, where he's always operating from a laptop anyway. And so you can take, once the wheels get in position, take this puppy and just roll it around wherever you want. I think this is freaking sweet. I would have never condoned this, but now I kind of like it. And so you can take this guy and put it wherever. So let's say you wanted to watch a movie. Boom, you're set up. Is that cool or what? I'd make sure it was straight. And he's got his matching powder coated chair. Really cool. I won't show you these drawers. I didn't organize this one. So uh, then of course, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you think. Audio in the garage is awesome. I'm sorry I can't freaking play it for you because of the stupid copyright stuff. The idea here, the concept was audio first, video second, um, but why not make it work for both? And so I've always wanted to do a NAD Masters M17 preamp uh, and then do the powered studio monitor, uh, their Pascal Class D amplified, um, super powerful core speakers. So three core 59s, so left, center, right, two core sevens, so right and left rear, and then two subwoofers. So one in the corner out of phase, so that's 180 degree out of phase from this one. Uh, it's all direct calibrated. Um, the only thing that's a little lackluster that um, I'm gonna guilt Fred into getting a better TV because this TV is junk. Um, this is a, I forget what it was, like a U80 base, you know, just LCD. Um, it's, it's not good. So um, I think I blew the budget with uh, all the cabinets and all the stuff. So um, uh, he, uh, we'll, we'll get him, he'll, he'll get a better TV at some point, but it, it's, it serves the purpose at the, at the, at the moment. So the way that it's wired, because we built this or because he built this and Kyle designed it, I'll show you the, the epicenter, the M17 is actually upstairs. And so we have a HDMI cable running down to the display. I have a very simple Apple TV remote. So my Apple TV remote controls it, or I can use my phone. Good thing I saw my phone in here because I would have lost it. I've been looking everywhere for it. So 
the one thing I can do is play Blue OS, so the Blue OS app, and I can listen to music. Here's the players right here, so I have the garage, and I have the wash bay. I can, I can add them together, I can hand off from one room to the next, or I can watch TV. Uh, and so the beauty of HDMI or CEC control, control over HDMI, consumer electronics control, is I can get rid of some custom remote and just have a simple Apple TV, uh, and then I can control my system right from here and you know, watch whatever I want to watch, whenever I want to watch it, right from, you know, right in the garage. Having LCD is important. I'd rather have an organic LED in the garage, but the problem with all the windows and the lights and the glare just isn't really a great solution. So you do want LCD. Uh, and then, you know, you can go watch Obsessed Garage videos or whatever you want here in the garage, which is really, really cool. When I'm done with it, I just hit the power button, turns everything off, turns the M17 off, turns the Apple TV off, turns the display off, and control it right from here. I don't have to teach them how to use it. They don't have any handshake issues. And so what I did, Apple TV's down here behind the display, runs into HDMI number three, uh, or HDMI number four, HDMI number three is run up to the, to the M17, and it all communicates with a single remote control, which is really, really cool. So the couple of things that are coming, to, like this is one of the most complete projects we've done in such a short period of time. He's got baseboards they need to get installed. Uh, and then these doors are actually going to become barn doors. Uh, and so this door is going to open up a little bit wider uh, and then the barn door will kind of roll into the wash bay and the, and the storage area. So come back here and check out this wash bay area. It's pretty sweet. So what you would do, you come in this section. Now this isn't designed to fit a car. It's 15 feet deep, 16 feet wide. There's, I wish I could show it to you. It's kind of overcast here today. <clears throat> but there is like a dead fixed shadow line that comes to like right here. And it's like a perfectly straight line all day, every day, except for night and you know, nighttime. Uh, and so you have 15 feet deep, but you have another, say, 20 feet exterior that's shaded. Uh, and so why not enjoy this amazing, you know, Southern California weather? Central Southern California weather, uh, and um, and so you would have the car three quarters up into the area here, the other or maybe half into the area depending on how big it was, uh, and then of course you have this guy, dual Krenzel setup. So this Krenzel setup feeds the other wash area in the main you know section of the garage. Let's say it was dead of the summer, it was really, really hot, and you didn't want to come and have the door open, um, and the air conditioner, once you get the air conditioner installed, it'll actually, it's all pre-plumbed here for, for a, a, like a ductless uh, VRV system or something that he has planned. Um, but let's say it was really hot, you could go wash in there, and it's powered and controlled by this setup here. Uh, we also have future proofing in that, notice this is capped off. Uh, we can either do a hose reel on the outside, on the exterior, or possibly put a boom pole in here somewhere, uh, or maybe in a boom pole on the outside, like a, a 180 degree boom. Uh, and so the concept here, the way this works, we have water running from our Prevost line into the new OG prototype number 000.1. You know, this is a very, uh, rough prototype of our DI system that Fred's going to test for us. But this is uh, what's going to become one iteration of the OG uh, deionization system. And so the DI system then is you know, either passed through or you turn it on and, and filter the water. Uh, and then it comes up into our dual Krenzla setup. So we have two Krenzlas. And you have valves here where you can use one or both. Most of the time you're going to use both. Uh, and the system is really quite simple. I connect my hose, or I remove my PP plug. I connect my pressure washer, gun and wand. I can pull out you know, my hose however launch length. We have 100 feet on here. Um, Fred didn't want any blue, he wants green, and so we made him a custom black Gates hose. So it's the same as the OG hose, just in black, uh, non-marking hose. I would turn water on, and then I turn my pressure washers on and I'm ready to rock at 4.18 gallons per minute was the test at 1,000 PSI. So we're still operating at a safe pressure for washing a car 
fact. I'm gonna take my hand. Not, if I'm not hurting my hand, I'm hopefully not hurting my paint, uh, but I'm moving a lot of water. So the reason why you would do pre two pressure washers is for the flow. Of course, this has the really amazing Mosmatic swivel, so my hose never gets bound up. Uh, and then our T304 stainless Mosmatic fittings that we've developed with them. And of course, this is the OG designed gun and wand with the you know quick disconnect setup so that I can switch between long gun, with the wand or short gun if I'm doing my wheels and very quickly and easily make the swap. Mosmatic wand holder on the side, uh, Cox hose reel. Um, these of course, kind of how I got my start in having my own business was selling these pressure washer systems. Uh, so if you're interested, super helpful. If you want to be the next Fred, hit me up. Let me turn my water off, water's off. Turn my pressure washers off. The other beauty of having a system on the wall like this is I can very easily and quickly break down, just wind up the hose, run the water out, stow everything as if I was never there. Put my PP plug in here so I'm not dribbling water. Fix my hose and I'm back to clean and organized. So dual Krenzla, a lot of people say, well, Matt, why not three? Well, 4.2 gallons a minute, a minute is about the most you can handle one-handed. Once you get up to that, then you need kind of a side handle. Uh, and, you know, so I think two is the most that we're going to do. Um, I don't think you need any more. There's some real advantages to this. We actually have a bigger single pump, the KWS 700, which does 3.3 gallons a minute, but it holds a lot more inline pressure. So even if we change the nozzle to dial the pressure back to 1,000 PSI or so, it has a huge kick to it um, that uh, isn't preferential. Plus, these have the on-off switch so as soon as I or the, the pressure switch that turns it on off, as soon as I release the trigger, it turns off. The KWS doesn't do that. Uh, and so, although there's a lot going on here, I just, we love Fred, me, Kyle, everybody who comes in here. I just love this industrial look. We could hide all this stuff, it makes it less serviceable. We could do that, but I just, I just like how this kind of mechanical stuff looks. And if you do it cleanly, it can look really awesome. Here's our other valve set up to go to, so that's how we would turn on our secondary wash area. Turn the valve on, um, and then third wash area. Now, because we have two Krenzels, technically you could wash in here and wash there, but you couldn't have two pressure washers going at the same time. It can't, it can't create enough pressure for that. Um, so you would have to divert use one pressure washer for here, another pressure washer for there, but you know, Fred's usually gonna be in here washing by himself, so um, you're gonna use both Krenzlas at four gallons a minute in both locations. We have our uh, collaboration with Perfect Detail USA where we have our foam cannon mounts, which is super, super clean. Uh, so you have your pre-wash, regular soap, wheel cleaner, so that's why we do three of them. Um, and then uh, he has another, you know, Viper chair here. Uh, we did these um, timbre doors. So these are Sonic cabinets as well that he had powder coated, uh, the timbre door. And then we actually modified this. He had some custom shelves made because they don't have a shelf. So we have our washing stuff. We have our drying stuff and our drying aid and, and also waterless washing. We have our wheel and extra stuff here. Super cool. We have our towels, drying towels, some more leather spray as well. Uh, so we have that set up. This is um, already plumbed for a sink. So there'll be a sink going in here and there's some more lighting coming in here as well. Most of the time we'll have the, we'll have the door open washing dur you know, during the day, um, but we do have some more light. Uh, it needs another uh, bank, a couple banks of, uh, of Cree lighting. So that's the dedicated wash bay. It's obviously sloped to run out. There's drains everywhere, it seems. Uh, and uh, Swiss Trax is the perfect candidate for this setup. This is really, really cool. This um, 
Um, I guess I can take a little credit for this. This is inspired by the, my, my original wash bay at the Woodgate house. So similar setup where I had the cabinets and stuff and, um, and uh, I washed in the pole barn area. We don't need the pole barn because of the weather here and the way that the sun rises and sets. It rises and sets you know, east to west. Uh, and so you always have this great demarcation line of, uh, of shade no matter what. So come in here, let me show you the prep kitchen, the future prep kitchen. So here's where we were working from. We had all these plastic bins and stuff, so this will go away um, and this will become shelving and cabinets. Uh, and here is gonna become a prep kitchen for some of the events and stuff they're gonna host. Right now we have the washer dryer set up. <clears throat> um, but this will be a very European style prep kitchen with a big giant countertop and storage and up, up and above, above and below. Um, so that way when they are hosting different events and stuff, they'll be able to um, uh, prep it and put it all together here. I'm I suppose they'll do, they'll do a bunch of really cool high-end appliances and stuff. Back here is the mechanical area. This is where we have the Compact X. Uh, and so this is where our compressed air system functions, works. Um, so this is um, the silenced oil heated rotary screw compressor. It's perfect for a consumer garage. If you're considering an air compressor, let me just reset it here because I was messing with it earlier. Um, this sucker operates at around less than 60 decibels. Uh, it delivers about 12 CFM. Uh, it uh, has micro or micron level filtration. So it has four stage or three stage filtration. It has a built in uh, filter regulator so you can adjust the, the pressure. It goes up to 145 PSI. Uh, it um, has oil water separator as well as an oil tank or water tank on the back. Um, and uh, it's pretty much the coolest thing you've ever seen. So let's turn it on and get it fired up here. Still learning how to use it. So it's always hard to tell on camera, but I'm talking to you at normal voice, standing next to an air compressor, and it, it's just wild. So I, I need one of these in my life so badly. Um, the max capability of this is like impact or like uh, the standard for most of our garages, for most people, is you want to be able to do a, use a Rupes polisher or a sander. Uh, and so this will handle that. It'll handle one sander. Uh, if you need more than that, we have some other solutions as well, all the way up to you know, delivering 200 plus CFM for our dry ice solutions. Uh, but for most consumer garages, this thing, I mean, look at it. I mean, it's super tight form factor. Uh, the reason why it's not tucked against the wall is because that's where the, the oil water separator container is. But tell me this isn't the freaking coolest thing you've ever seen. We're already at 111 PSI. It has a 30 gallon tank, but it will operate at 100% duty cycle. So it'll continue to operate even when the tank is drained. So we have a 30 gallon tank, but we have several hundred feet of lines. So we probably have the equivalent of an 80 gallon tank, you know, with all the lines we have in our, in our system here. Uh, but this thing is pretty incredible. Bathroom here. Uh, so clearly back here, he's, he's got some, you know, this, this, this area will be coming together. Um, uh, in the future, there's all the remaining prevost we had, um, but nice, neat, organized. Uh, as he moves in here, as we go home, and he can start to put things together and put things in place. Uh, this is all going to come together as well. So then, last area of the garage is up here. This is a future sim room or hangout area, office, something like that. Here he has an office in the house. Um, so that's where the M17 is housed and everything's on auto standby. So it is hardwired into the network. You can do it wirelessly, but I have, you know, ethernet connections run to it. So that's where all our XLR connections run to the M17. The M17 is a preamp. Uh, and so uh, the amplification is all done by the speakers. So we have what, nine XLR connections run down to the individual speakers. His network connectivity is here. Uh, and so the lines are extra long because we may set up a rack in this location, depending on what happens here. And then there is a big window right here, giant window. 
Uh, and so that window will get opened up so we'll be able to look down into the garage. So I feel like I just talked to you for an hour and uh, I only scratched the surface of all the little intricate details that have gone into this place. It's been years of planning, years of prepping, years of designing. Uh, thanks to Kyle and his team for putting in such great effort. Thanks to Fred for being an amazing host and uh, being such a gracious you know, customer. He paid for all this stuff and uh, we donated our time to come out here, but he was gracious enough to be on camera and be a part of it. He was out here every single day, all day with us you know, running errands, running to Ace Hardware. Uh, it was such a fantastic experience and I think we really together created a masterpiece. It takes, it takes a great design team, it takes a great customer uh, in order to put together something like this. Uh, and then, you know, Mike, Mike and I and Kyle, we came out here and put our uh, blood, sweat and tears into this place and I think it turned out, I don't think, I know it turned out fantastic. Uh, I don't know that, uh, I can't imagine it getting much better than this. We have great audio, we have great video, we have an amazing, comfortable place that's well lit, awesome storage, dedicated wash bay, lifts for days. It's a dream come true. So I'm gonna turn the keys over to Fred. I hope he enjoys it. I know he's gonna take good care of it. Uh, I'm interested to come out in the future and see what other ideas he comes up with. But man, this was a, a great experience that um, I can put in my, you know, in my, in my Rolodex of uh, lifelong, my lifelong journey. This, uh, this ranks up there pretty high and uh, as far as, you know, things I've been able to be a part of. So thanks for watching. More series to come. Uh, the next series coming up is the epic garage that I'm going to build at uh, the new OGHQ. Uh, and who knows what, what else we get into. If you want to be the next Fred uh, and Kim us to come out and do your place, uh, there's a couple of, there's a lot of requisites that we require in order to do this, it seems now, since uh, John and Fred have taken such good care of us in the two major epic garages we've done. Uh, but I think I could be convinced to do another one like this. You just need to have a guest house. You need to take care of us in food, clothing, shelter, uh, be really nice, be a part of it. Um, and I'm sure you could convince us to come out and do your project. As always, you know, I think the, uh, I think the saying, is really appropriate here. Stay tuned for more crazy. This is a crazy project. It turned out better than I could have imagined and it almost feels like I'm in a place that isn't real. So congrats to Fred. Thanks to all my team for helping and uh, on to the next garage. Let's do it again. <laughs>